Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hobby Night. I've got something special for you today because we've got a reaction video. There is a new D&D &D trailer and Chaos Cultist has sort of hinted about some of the details of it, but I've not actually watched this video yet. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see what they've got in store for us. Dungeons and Dragons is a thrilling adventure. One we play together as yeah. dungeon master and players but also an adventure itself. Now we stand at the start of a new generation of Dungeons and Dragons. And today we're going to introduce some of what's in store for us as we embark on an initiative that we call One D&D. &D. Okay, interesting. Growing up, I loved fantasy, but I never saw myself as the hero because I didn't think it was possible for someone who looked like me, who acted like me, who was like me to be that hero. And that's great thing about we want to continue right? to reach out to folks who are interested in fantasy, who love storytelling, who enjoy spending time with their friends and creating these collective stories that they can okay. remember for years to come. D&D has been around for 50 years and there's very little that persists that long that becomes generational that people can really just not only share, but literally hand down to their kids. What we want to do is just add to that legacy. We did okay. a smart thing with 5th edition by listening to the fans. And what came out of that process was a system that is stable, that is well-loved, that incorporates the best elements of earlier editions. Now that we have that, we are no longer true. in the position where we think of D&D as an edition. It's just D and D. So they're fifth edition is a rule set that has worked for so many people and has brought so many new and exciting folks into the game. It's more important for us to continue to cultivate and respect and, and love what it is you know th that the world has told us is working for them. The sort of change you're going to see isn't about taking anything away from you, isn't about changing any of that stuff that you love. It's much more okay. about giving you more, giving you more options, giving you more. Um, I'm going to pause really briefly because that statement of we're not taking anything away from you or changing anything that you love is always a red flag to me that they are, in fact, changing things. So let's let's see what they're changing. Choices you can make, more character types you can play, more magic spells you can cast. Basically, you know, we're very happy with the game the way it is today. We just want to build on that. We're revising the major core rule books that every player uses, the player's handbook, the dungeon master's guide, the monster manual. One of my focuses not a new specifically is the dungeon master's guide. I'm going to make some structural changes to make it more friendly to new DMs. When it comes to art for D&D, it's about as versatile as our players. We want to show that the person you are can appear in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. That's what 2024 holds, is this promise of getting so new versions of the books that are the game you know, but reflect where the game is presently. One D&D has three pillars, and uh, one is the rule set, which is built on the base of fifth edition, but updated. We're building upon the rules that have been established, the storytelling, and expanding our world and our rule system. When we say building on top of fifth edition, what we mean is that um, all the adventures and supplements that have been released in the past 10 years will still be playable with the new evolution of D&D. Then there's D&D Beyond, which is the base of our digital tools and assists right. for players in DM. Currently, players are cobbling together all kinds of different apps and websites to have a true integrated D&D &D experience. What we want to do is actually just provide all the tools that the players need to play themselves in one space. Right now, with the acquisition of D&D Beyond, we've already started to dip our toe into digital, and it was a fantastic partnership that we have okay. going, but we can add more. Digital, digital physical bundles is something that we've wanted to do for a long time, and now that D&D Beyond is part of our family, it's finally something we can do. Your content is available anywhere you want it, and you have those physical books, but you've got nice portable versions that you can access through your phone or through your tablet or through your other device. Then our future facing aspect of this is the D&D Digital, which will become a full play space. So they're doing For you to have experiences simulator. that are more immersive. Right now we're in early development of our digital experience. We can play a game, roll some dice, see the miniatures moving around in a 3D play space, um, but that's just the core of it. We chose the Unreal Engine for several reasons. Reason number one, make it look dope. Okay, I mean, that's fair. 
That's the first thing. Number two is take care of the lazy DM, because we're all lazy DMs. <laughs> Ease of use means being able to access all of the tools that you need in order to get the adventure started. So we use the camera technique called tilt shift. It actually makes things look small. We want to make sure that the experience for you is that you're experiencing a miniature set. The tilt shift camera was really chosen so that people understood that this wasn't a video game, but it is a digital experience. We want to give people more minis, more options for character customization. You can actually change the features, do what you want with it. And you're going to I mean, use this miniature cool. approach to tell stories. I like the idea that in this program, you're going to be able to supposedly adapt your miniatures I assume to make them look like how you want. I wonder if you're going to be able to like import STL files to also use in this system. Like if that's going to be something they're incorporating. Stories, just like you do in physical tabletop. To have your character live. Oh, okay, so yes. I'm transported there but I'm not limited by the digital technology. We might give you a pre-made campaign from us that has an exciting castle or keep with a dungeon inside of it, exciting NPCs, but then you're gonna be able to take this playset, take it apart, and build your own. We're gonna have a really robust tool for you to be able to create your own dungeons. This is just the start of 1D&D, &D, and we are relying on all of you to help us out and figure out that future together. What you're gonna be able to see starting in August is a steady release of these playtest packages where you'll be able to engage with key aspects of the game, provide us with feedback that then we will digest, process, interpret, analyze, Definitely and then curious to act look at upon. These digital packages. Really, it's you shaping the next generation of Dungeons and Dragons, and we want to hear exactly what you have to say. Playtesting starts today. Dang, Go okay. to dndbeyond.com, download the playtest packet, and get ready to let us know where you'd like this next leg of the adventure to go. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, so I have a lot of thoughts about this because on one hand, I like the idea of them introducing a section where you, like an area where you can play online with a cool 3D setting. Because for me personally, I really like miniatures in my D&D &D games and I like cool settings in my D&D &D games. Like I want a full blown, I like Dwarven Forge it up, right? So the fact that this is able to give that to you is fantastic, however, the way that they're describing the system of updating the rules as like they need to feels a little bit more like live ops in like video game development. And that really has me slightly concerned because they've not really made an indication too much of like, I'm trying to get, find a picture of like the physical books. Like they've not made a huge indicator that all of this additional content that they're going to be putting on D&D Beyond in this new program is going to be physically printed, which means that if you want to use some of this stuff as a DM or a player, you might have to use the app. And that, what happens when they stop supporting it? Like, if they stop supporting it, like there's a possibility that they won't, but any time digital components get added into a game that is traditionally supposed to be non-digital, it makes me really, really concerned about where the future of that game is going to end up going because I feel like there's a lot more effort and thought and complexity that has to go into developing something for both a digital and non-digital format and making it work in both in a similar way so that the experience is not drastically different between the two if you have people jumping between them. And so this is very interesting. Let me know what your thoughts of D&D 1 is. Are you excited for it? Do you like the prospect? I do is actually just this, provide um, all the tools of this new system that is going to be more digital. I know a lot of people during the COVID era really started to do a lot more digital online games to be able to play with each other. I just, if, it, if it's that gotten that popular and it demands this kind of content, I mean, I'm excited, but I'm also a little nervous. So again, tell me what you're thinking down below. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little video of us checking out this new D&D &D trailer. I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful hobby night.